Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Scott and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a wind restrictor brand wind deflector in a C5 convertible. Hi, I'm Lily and you're watching the Corvette channel. The first thing I wanted to do is to go over with you all of the different stuff that you're going to need to be able to install the restrictor. Um, so you have a set of instructions here and it has some uh, templates. I've gone ahead and I made an additional copy of the uh, instructions where I was able to keep the originals and then I have a couple templates that I need that to be able to cut the carpet. And so when we're going through the uh, through the steps, I'll show you how these are installed. We're also going to have the power tap that we're going to need to be able to power it into the system, and also the washers and the screws that's going to uh, ad adapt the the bracket on the restrictor onto the main brackets, as well as if you purchased a multi-light uh, kit uh, with the remote, then you'll have that also. And we'll be covering that and I will cover the uh, installation of just the single light, uh, single wi two wire setup also. Um, but you'll have both, uh, I'll explain both of them in the video. Uh, some of the tools that you're going to need is going to be a hair dryer uh, or a heat gun. You're going to want to be able to heat the uh, adhesive up here on the bracket so it will get a nice good bond. And then you're also going to need a razor knife. You're going to need a T15 and a T10 Torx, um, as well as a pair of scissors to be able to cut the uh, template out. Um, and then it also comes with a the uh, like I said the templates, and it also comes with the a gauge that allows you to get the exact uh, distance um, on the bracket from the side of the car. So that pretty much covers what you're going to get. It all comes in the package minus the uh, hair dryer and the, uh, the Torx and your, your uh, scissors. But uh, it also comes with some cleaner. Um, you do not want to use Windex on this. Uh, it, it, Windex is an abrasive and it will actually scratch the, uh, the plexiglass. So you don't want, you don't want to use that. So this stuff is called Novus and you can get it online um, or you can get it at Walmart so it's not hard to find it's just something you want to make sure that you use this and they give you a sample of it uh, which is more than enough for a while but you'll want to make sure that you get some so when it runs runs out you'll have some we're going to be putting those templates that I showed you a minute ago uh, they're gonna be going right up over here on this carpet and then we will end up cutting a, a T mark in the in the carpet and we'll be doing that on both sides and then at that point we'll be able to pull this carpet back to be able to gain access to the metal uh, uh, underneath then at that point we'll be able to uh, heat that uh, adhesive up and put the uh, the brackets on and then we'll be able to pull and put the carpet back up and over uh, you know through the uh, put the brackets through the carpet so they'll be sticking back up over here. Um, and then on this particular installation, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the uh, the controller, and I'll be showing you that here in a minute. We're going to be pulling the um, the waterfall off of the car, and we're going to be there's a little place in there, nice and neat, that we can put the controller. So we'll be putting it in there, and so it'll be totally hidden, and we'll be able to run the wiring right down underneath this here, um, following all the way down into here, and going down around this edge of the seat, and then we'll continue the wiring right up the threshold here, uh, going up here, and catching going up into the uh, the kick panel over here. First thing we want to do, uh, in the instructions they talk about putting the templates in the very first part of it, but what I decided I wanted to do was to be able to get this, um, the, the waterfall out of the way. I didn't want to take the chance of uh, scratching it or anything like that, and I know that I'm going to be putting my uh, LED controller inside of it. So um, this has uh, four 15, in, uh, four, four 15 torque screws on it. 
Now we're going to go ahead and take off of here. And we're going to get this up and out of the way. And there's two there on the top. There's two here on the bottom here. And then this just slides right on up. Up and out. Okay. So I'm just going to set this off to the side so we don't hurt it. There's a spot right up here in the very front of the waterfall inside here that the LED controller fits in perfectly. You can see right there that just that just fits. And so um, I will end, of it, end up putting a little bit of stick tape in it so it doesn't bounce around, but this foam is holding it in place, so not, not a problem there. So now that we've got the waterfall out of the way, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our templates that we cut out of our instruction sheet. We're going to put those right up against the base of the car here uh, on each side of the, uh, this hump here. Okay, and the word bottom is actually going to be up against the plastic of the car. So what we're doing is that we're just going to make sure that it's pretty much right up at the top here and we're going to take our razor knife and we're going to cut the carpet I'm going to hold this in place and we're going to cut that carpet so we can get the the bracket fill to go through okay so once you got that cut then, then you can go ahead and you can pull the carpet back to open up uh, open it up to the, the metal underneath and you'll just you'll do that on both sides of this and so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'll come back and I'll do this side here and then we'll come back to the video alright so what we've done is we've gone ahead and we've pulled the carpet back here we had already cut the T in it we pulled it out and so on on John's car here he has a real high-powered uh, uh, stereo system and it has some amps and that type of stuff in here so they've put some uh, sound deadening material here that would make a real big mess if we were to pull this off. And it's nice and smooth anyhow. So um, we can go ahead and we can just put the bracket just right over it. It's going to fit exactly the same way. But when you pull your carpet back, it would just be just plain metal that you're going to see here. But, um, but you know, it, it, this isn't going to make any difference on how it's installed. So what you're going to be doing here now that you've got the carpet back, we're going to take this and it says in the instructions to use a Sharpie pen. I'm not going to be able to see a black Sharpie pen on some black here. So I'm going to have, I have some tape that I'm going to be able to mark. And all I'm doing is I'm using that gauge that was included to make sure that I get the right distance from the edge of the uh, edge of the plastic here. Okay. So we're going to go like so and we'll get it get it where it's like that okay so it's holding it and then we're gonna push it down it's like so and our gauge is perfectly dead on and then I'm gonna I'm going to tape put some tape here right where this bracket goes and this is gonna allow me to be able to pull the bracket back up pull the adhesive uh, the sticky off the adhesive and be able to put it right back in place. And then once we get that done, we'll press that down real tight and we'll go do the other side. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use, you can use a heat gun. I'm going to use a hair dryer. Um, and we're just going to heat the bracket in the, the uh, metal area up over here where it's going. So I'm just going to turn that on. We're going to run this for about 10 seconds somewhere in that ballpark. We're just trying to get it a little bit warm. The garage that we're working in today, it's probably about 75 degrees, so. You just don't want this adhesive to be cold when you do it. All right, and then we're just gonna pull the a sticky back here. All right, so we got all the stickies off now. Now we're gonna go right back to the blue mark here where I put with the tape. And this way we can get this 
Get it on there. Now you gotta be really careful because this thing is really sticky. So you're gonna try to get it right on one edge and then we'll try to walk it on to the other side. But it's really, 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 really a tight squeeze here. All right, I think we got it. So now we just have to do this exact same thing on the other side. So we're just gonna cut the other side here. And it'll be much easier for you too because you're able to stand outside. Me filming, it's uh, kind of hard to be able to film, show you everything at the same time. So you'll be able to get a little more leverage if you're standing outside the car. Okay, this side's cut also, we'll just put the bracket on. We've got the, we lifted the carpet here and I was able to be able to put my finger up through there so we definitely have it cut. Okay, so um, that part's all taken care of. We just need to pull this carpet back here like so. It's kind of on the stiff side. And so that just reveals the same thing we had on the other side. So we're just gonna uh, put the bracket here in place with our little gauge. We've got our gauge here. We've got our carpet pulled back. We've got our bracket here like so. Just gonna put our gauge right here up against the, the plastic. And we are going to set our, our bracket in place. Okay. And we just wanna make sure that the bracket is straight up and down and that our gauge is, is holding in place like so. So we've got that right where we pretty much need it. And so we're gonna set our stuff down, put a little bit of, get some of this tape. Again, if you were working without this, uh, the Dynamat stuff in here, you wouldn't have to worry about this. You could just probably just mark, mark it with a, a Sharpie pen, but I decided to do it this way with the blue tape, so this way we don't, I don't mess up. So at this point, we now have exactly where this bracket's gotta go. And we're just gonna pull this little guy off. And again, we're gonna heat everything up for about 10, 15 seconds. We're gonna heat this up, heat this up, and then we'll put this down and we'll let it sit for a few minutes and then we'll be able to put the restrictor on. Okay. I'm just gonna pull these little guys off. Okay. And we're just gonna set this little guy in place and make sure we don't get that wire. Make sure we're lined up. And get it in place. So you just keep wiggling it down until she seats all the way down. Okay, so once we've got the, the bracket in place, then all we need to do now is to um, get the carpet, just to go ahead and feed um, the bracket through the carpet and then um, we can start working on getting the, the wiring done. So we're just going ahead and we're going to push the carpet back down over the bracket. If you don't have anything in your trunk or any extra stereo equipment you won't be having as much uh, fit with the carpet as I am with this one. Um, but uh, this is going in reasonably easy enough just you're just wanting to fold it all back in place get it tucked back in just like so okay so that side is done okay so we're on the driver's side now we're just going to be pulling this carpet up and over this bracket and it's tight, there's no doubt, but you want it to be nice and smooth. We've got that there like so. And we just want to tuck the, tuck the carpet down. Okay. So she is in place. We're going to take our gauge here. The gauge fits fine, so our brackets are right where they need to be. So our brackets are installed. So the next thing that we've got to do is we've got to run the wiring down to the, the LCD unit, the controller, 
and then put the uh, waterfall back in and then we should be able to put the restrictor in place. So the next thing that we have to do is we've got to be able to put our LED light unit onto the, the deflector itself. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to flip it we're going to put it upside down here because this is the bottom and we're going to put this little guy on and this screw is just a little, little tight so we're going to loosen that up. We'll put that flat like that and then we want to get it pretty close to center. Okay. And then we're just going to take our 10, 10 millimeter Torx or T10 Torx I should say, not 10 millimeter. Okay, and we're just going to snug them up. This way it's not going anywhere. So now we're ready to go putting it into the car. And so these are the wires that are going to, we're just going to round these over. Since we're putting these into, or the controller itself, into the waterfall, these wires don't uh, have to go very far. It'll just be the wires that are coming out of the, uh, the LED unit that has to run all the way out of the front of the car. We're about ready to hook up the uh, multicolor LED controller. And um, if you purchase that, you're going to have four wires that are on this uh, little guy here that's going to be actually connecting to the LED controller. And then you'll have two wires that are coming out that goes to the power. So uh, in the video, you can just, if you bought a two wire model um, that is the one light version, then you can bypass watching this piece and I will put it on the screen, a timestamp of when you can start back over and start watching just the wire coming out to the ground and to the, uh, the front of the car. Um, otherwise, you're more than welcome to watch. Um, what I am doing though, in the instructions they did, they made for you, they were intending this, mod, this unit to make it and be pushed down into the, uh, down behind the seat. Um, we're not going to do that in this one. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put it up here in the waterfall like I mentioned before. And so by doing so, it makes it so these wires are really long and the other wire is really short. So um, I went down to the store, I bought some, some more uh, uh, larger or longer wire and you can do that also. Um, and so you, you can choose on where you're going to put it. There's no right and no wrong, just wherever you're, you're comfortable putting this unit. So, um, but where I'm hooking the power onto it is going to be the exact same. The, uh, the instructions say to grab your uh, ground wire off of the back, uh, the back nut or back bolt of the uh, seat, of the driver's seat. Um, I'm actually going to attach my ground here on the support for the waterfall. So those are probably the only two things that I'm deviating from on this, but um, again, there's no right or wrong. You, you choose it, you know, ground it and power it depending on where your application, where you were, um, where you feel com comfortable putting it. Okay. So uh, with that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and since I made this a little bit, we'll, we only have to go just so far. I'm going to clip this back some because I don't need this all this wire here. So I'm just going to cut that off so we don't need this little guy here anymore. And then, so we're going to have those four wires going into the controller like so and we're going to have this wire coming out. And that would be how you would do it if you're going behind this uh, and tucking this in behind the seat. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to hook those wires up and then I'm going to just go from a very short ground wire right to here. And then we'll run our one single wire all the way up to the front underneath the dash. What we did is we went ahead and I just pulled the, the wire just from over at the waterfall down the carpet. Got it out from underneath the seat here. And so now we've got to get it through the threshold and up into uh, this kick panel here. So I'm just going to lift this up. This just pops loose here. And you just want to do it just a little bit at a time. Just shake it in a little bit and instead of prying it. It won't end up, that way it won't break the plastic. And then the spring clips will just allow it to come free. So you've got a clip here, 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 and down here at this end. Okay, so that just comes loose. It'll come out of your way. And then at that point, you can get get your carpet pulled over and out of the way, and you can tuck this, the 
this wire right up along the body there between there and the carpet and get it up over to that point right there and then the next step we have to do is we've got to take the two torque screws out of the bottom here this kick panel and then this has some uh, snaps just like these here that we'll be able to pop this little guy loose and then we can get to the wiring that's right here and then we're just pulling the last of the screw out, screws out here there's only two of them so after you get the two bottom screws out of the out of the kick panel here you've got to take a screwdriver and pop this little this little cover off and you want to do it really very carefully because you don't want to break these little ears uh, if you can see those ears there, uh, you just don't want to break those off because it'll even end up having to buy another one of these covers. And then the other one over here, uh, the trunk release and the uh, and the road light button, you can actually get out with your fingers. Okay, and you can see here there's a screw right there. Okay, and then there's one right there we have to take loose and then that will allow this whole piece to drop down take the screw out okay. Okay, so we're just going to pull this down like so like that and this will drop down too Like so. Now you want to be careful on this side because you've got a uh, you've got the cabin temperature sensor in there, so we can drop it and we can leave it like that, so we're not having to pull anything else loose. And that's going to get us access to the wiring harness that's right down in here. Once you get this cover loose, just get it up out of the way, then you can pull these wires. There'll there'll be three little bundles of wires here and there'll be one bundle that has a brown wire and now when it says brown it's really dark brown the other ones have white wires like the instructions talk about they also have some tan wires but this is the only bundle that has a brown wire and it's a very small gauge wire but this one comes on and off has power on and off with the um, when you turn the rate uh, the headlights on or your running lights so that's the light that you want to, or wire you want to tap into. We've got our red wire here that we've brought in. Now yours would be black, like we were talking, uh, the one that's in your kit. But these are the ones that I went down to the store and bought the, uh, the additional length wiring. So we're just going to put that into the, this vampire tap like so. And then we're going to crimp, crimp this one right around this yellow wire, or this brown wire, I should say. It's like so. And then we're going to crimp it down. Like that. Make sure it's all the way down and flush. And you should be able to close that off like so. And you're good to go. We are to a point where we, you just saw in the video where we tapped into the power under the dash. And so we've got that wire coming up over here that we've run un back from under the carpet here. And so this wire's I've cut it a little bit short, so I can do all the show you all the other wiring here on the LED controller here, and then I'll bring it over and tie it up, and we'll tuck it in the hole. So we'll leave that one alone for right now. But here's our our uh, black wire that we're going to use as a ground. We're just going to use a self-tapping screw into this tower. That's going to give us a ground here, and so we're just going to go and we're going to put that into uh, into the controller here. Now, this controller is one of the newer, newer controllers. They, um, they do change from time to time. So you're gonna, this one comes with an, a, a, a diagram that uh, gives you all the instructions on how and what to hook to it. So you want to make sure that uh, when you're installing your unit that you follow the directions as far as what color goes to what. Um, so, because uh, they might be labeled differently. So I'm just using a self-tapping screw here, and I'm going to go into this into, into the tower support. Just like so. I'm make sure that we snug it up. 
and it's nice and tight. And there we go. So now we're actually connected. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna we're gonna turn everything on and we're gonna check to see if the restrictor works. We're about ready to test the, the restrictor, but in order to do that, we've gotta be able to put some batteries into the remote and the remote does not come with batteries. So you wanna make sure that you have three AAA batteries. And we'll turn on the headlights here. And we'll turn it on. And as you can see here, we've actually got, we've got it working. What we're doing here is I'm just putting a little piece of two-way stick tape on the bottom of this uh, unit here on the LED controller so I can tuck it into, into this little cubby hole here. So we want to make sure when we orientate this that we have the deflector so you can read <clears throat> when you can read the Corvette emblem when you're looking from the back of the car and that if you're inside the car it will actually be looking like it's backwards. So we're going to be putting it like this, actually installing it like that. Okay, so it goes on like so. I can get the screws there to go in. And this will, this will flex enough that you can get them in on this side also. Just like so. Okay, so then, actually in this case, we'll actually be able to come right down the very front, just like so. We'll be able to tuck this in there like that. All right, so now that we got the deflector in place, it's still loose, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the waterfall in place. Okay, and that part is done. Okay, so then we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the the nuts on here, onto the bracket. Now I know that the instructions show that you can use a crescent wrench and you can do that. I just decided I wanted to use a socket. Those two are done. Now we just have these two over here. finished. We can turn on our lights and we see that. Hopefully you found this video informative and helpful and hopefully it helps you be able to put your wind restrictor in when it comes time that you get one. I want to take the time now to thank Wind Restrictor for sponsoring the Corvette channel and allowing us, this helps us to be able to bring these videos to you and so I just want to th reach out to those kind folks over there at Wind Restrictor and thank them very much for doing this. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed it and you guys have a great night. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Corvette channel. Don't forget to hit like on the video and make sure you subscribe.